we've been working on the site in one way or the other over the past six, seven months. The larger the concrete pours that are carried out, the larger the risk. So there's a lot of planning that needs to be taken into account. Engineers have to look at whether the, the uh, boxing is adequate for the weights of the concrete. Um, we've also had to uh, utilise strength that's been provided by the sheet piling um, and a lot of pre-planning to, to allow for large scale um, concrete pours. You got all your, your plumbing that goes in, your reinforcing, your electrical and all that, you gotta make sure that all the air pipes are protected as well and everything's going to plan and as per methodologies with the um, pumping around either side of the sites, bringing it up the 450 levels and moving on, vibration, yeah there's a, there's a lot involved with it all. The point of starting early on when concrete pour is the traffic wise, you know, like early in the morning, no traffic, get the trucks in faster. As soon as you hit the eight o'clock, nine o'clock mark, traffic picks up, production slows down, can't feed the pumps quick enough. We always had that concern of the concrete trucks not keeping up with the pumps, but uh, on the day it was the other way around, the, the concrete plant fed the trucks in quick enough, so we had them stacked up and it just went really smooth to plan. 1,480 cube we ended up putting in the hole. That involved 300 ton of reinforcing and hours of labour obviously and the uh, guys the input with the guys boxing it up and the time frames is pretty critical. It's, it's great for Christchurch obviously seeing something like this going up and going up so fast as well. This will act as the centre city stop and transport interchange for the ECAN led bus operations. It's part of the, what they call the hubs and spokes model, which is the efficient method moving forward to ensure that people using the buses can come in quickly, change and more efficiently. So there'll be buses running very smoothly. We're designing it not only for the current need, but for the need in 2041. So in 30 years time, we're saying what this is going to be. And what you have to imagine here is a space that will have 70,000 people a day coming into and out of it. So that was quite a challenge in terms of design. So we started with the technical requirements. How do you actually get that many buses to come through in that time? We settled on a model that requires 16 bus bays. Because of the Canterbury weather, the idea of having an airport style lounge was an absolute must. It was one of the key things here. So that when you come into the space, you're protected from the weather. There'll be retail areas, warm waiting areas, and it will have a huge roof over it, it'll feel like a market. What we're going to have here is a fantastic piece of modern architecture that will reflect both the historic values of the land but also what a modern city needs to be. When you see something like a concrete pour happening here, this has been 18 months or more in the making. That is the culmination of a huge amount of work by a huge amount of really professional people to get to that stage, the builders, the designers, even getting our stakeholders together to get them to get a clear vision, which is very much what we're trying to do here. This is a, a, an approach to get everything together in a tight time frame to deliver the recovery of the city.